Welcome along to the Throttle Cable. It's very early in the morning and I'm on the road. I'm on the road in the family mobile. It's not even seven o'clock, we're still in the sixes. I'm off to pick up some new seats for the, uh, the Outlaw. Looking quite forward to going to collect them. They are nice buckets from a very well-respected manufacturer built for the slightly larger framed gentleman, which sounds ideal for me. So I'll let you guess what those are. I'll be uh, picking them up hopefully very shortly as long as everything is as, as it should be. But I've got quite a little journey ahead of me. Um, hence the early start and I want to be back for family time this afternoon. Anyway, I'll pick this up in a bit. Bye bye. So I'm home and I've got the seats. Um, here they are. Bracaro SPG XLs. Really, really nice seats. Uh, the reason for going for the, the bigger versions, the XLs rather than the normal SPGs, is because for road driving, the bigger seat shell is actually a hell of a lot comfier um, and, and very supportive for somebody of my sort of build. I'm quite broad, so having the, the, the tight SPGs would be a bit tiresome uh, for, after a very short period of time, no doubt. The, the, the good thing about these seats, because they are the the xls the, the bottom of the seats where, where, where your hips sit flares out a bit and um, with that flare it means you've got a little bit of space to have the seatbelt receptacle coming on the inside of the seat which is a much safer way to fit um three point seat belts into a a bucket seat for me because this is going to be my fun road car now i'm not that concerned um about harnesses my primary concern is um is the three point belt so that's why these work very very well for that now i have considered harnesses as well as you do your mind starts to wander and i looked at the the normal spgs in the pole positions but the xls have the larger more modern style uh, harness holes at the rear and if i look over my shoulder you can see where i sit and where those harnesses would have to come in relation to those holes now with the spg and the the pole position they've got a, a very narrow slit purely because it's an older design. It's not a bad design, it's just, just an older style seat. And it gives you less flexibility on where your shoulders need to be to be completely aligned. And I was just finding that to get the absolute best um, natural line for the, the, those harnesses, these will work much better. So they'll work for me, they should work for pretty much anybody that gets in the car because you've got that other variance. So yeah, in the future, harnesses are, are also an option, so I've kept that on the cards. But let me have a, a, a quick show you around the seats, they're really cool. Okay, so here is the the shape of the seat. They're, they're really, really nice. The, the best thing about them, really for me, and for the three-point seats, is, is because of this flare here. So you can get a seatbelt receptacle come and sit here, and it's not going to be right in the way of your hips as you're sat there, and it's not going to be in the way of getting in and out. And then those nice large openings at the top of the harness holes. Um, they're going to be running on Recaro aluminium side mounts, and then these are the Recaro fitting kits. So the, the 996 specific parts are these runners, and you'll see it's, they've got the, the angled end to fit the, the normal mounting points in the car of, uh, for, for the runners to sit on top. These are the basic runners that you'll get with any kit. And then there's also some seatbelt uh, receivers. It's under there, I think, by the looks of it. And it gives you the space to, to put the, the actual buckle onto the runner as well. Um, a lot of people, will look at Bray Claws and other manufacturers that have um, the, the, the side mounts that go straight onto the original Porsche runners. The one thing to consider is with them, you can't get the seat quite as low and it's because of how the sliders work. Th this, is, this is the lever for the slider and it sits real far forward. So it, it clips on at the front here and this kind of corner curve will be running at the front of the slider and then this mechanism sits forward of the sliders. With the standard Porsche one, this bar literally goes straight across the center across the middle of the, the runners and i'll show you it when i get one seat out and that hinders you from dropping the seat particularly low because yeah, there's a there's a physical limitation of that that bar of the slider running left to right across the seat so for me i looked at loads of different options of what to do and just the recaro stuff was the best option to get any bucket seat in a car from what i could work out it's not the cheapest option but often the best way of doing things isn't the cheapest unfortunately so yeah, let's, uh, let's see if I can get them in. Looking forward to this. So to get the seat out, you've probably seen this on one of my videos before when I looked at the, um, the fire extinguisher. We need to release these caps, one little screw, 
then we pull it out with a little tab here over the top. It's the same on the other side, there's one little screw and you pull it out with a tab. I can't see the screw from here. There it is, the little screw, I pull it out. And then the rear is pretty similar, a couple of tabs that just pull off the rear. But if we do the front first, get that released, then do the back, it means that the seat will be forward and the springs underneath the seat will be released. They won't be under any sort of tension. The trouble is if you, if you take it out after doing the backs first, then slide it back, these are under huge tension under the spring and if you accidentally tap the lever, they will fly forward and jab you in the leg when you least expect it. And then down here at the rear, similar thing, these slide off, they're just looped underneath the runner here and there's a little tab that just catches on top of this bolt. So you just have to lift it up and then you can slide that off. Similar thing on the other side, but the one thing you have to watch out for is this bit of carpet. Press it down because it is actually kind of pulling up and it'll stop this back corner from sliding out. It'll dig in here. But as long as you press down that corner and then lift up the tab, it'll slide off. Then I can whip these two bolts out. Seat's free other than the cable underneath the seat. Okay, with the seat now free, you tilt it back and then you have to release this, uh, this cabling off the seat and then it can come back out. There's a tab on the left-hand side here. You can see if I zoom in. You just pull that out as you're sliding the clip out and it will help lever the whole assembly away and the seat's free to take out the car. One little tip, if you've got a nice big towel, put it on your sill. The last thing you want to do is gouge the side of your sill with one of the runners. But yeah, I've just got the seat lent forward now and I'm just going to lift it out and that's the seat away. Give it a quick hoover and a clean. While the seat's out of the car, I just wanted to have a quick look again at this bar that sits across the centre of the OEM slider. So I mentioned it sits right in the middle of the seat and it's a bit of a limiting factor of dropping the seat down. So you see fore and aft, it's pretty much bang on in the middle. And it, that bar sits as part of the mechanism, essentially the height of the mechanism. But even higher than that is the, the releasing catch. So when you, when you try and move your seat forward and back, this is the little lever which releases the the teeth in the slider to make it go forward and back and that's on both sides so it's quite a limiting factor when you're looking at how low a seat can go because the sides have to avoid this and the bottom of the seat has to avoid that if you look at the Recaro one from the front of the slider the bar goes straight out and then across in that sort of fashion so you're never limited underneath the seat by the bar and the locking mechanism is done within the height of the actual sliders, whereas the OEM one sits on top of it, it sits within it. So you've only got a 22 mil thick slider and that's it with no sort of intrusion or obstructions in the way for the seat to drop down low. So there's an empty well with everything cleaned out. Now, if you take this task on yourself and you don't hoover underneath your seat once you've taken it out, we can't be friends. That is just something that you cannot do. Hoover, make it clean. So the first thing to go back in are these frames. They just sit on the base and get us lined up to the, um, the Porsche seat mountains front and rear this angle at the front. What I've done is made sure they've gone underneath the carpet. So I'm metal on metal with my contact. I just need to push it up underneath here slightly. The other nice thing is that the Recaro set comes with this blanking cap so you can uh, blank off the now redundant electrics for the seat. So I'm going to do that next and then get my uh, my four bolts in, torqued into 40 newton meters. Just thought this might be interesting to see. This is the cap in its open position and as you close it this pushes in like that and then it's closed. So the removal is a reverse. You pull out the tab here and slowly work it out to um, out of the socket. That's how it goes in and out. So we've done part B, that's the frame in the base of the car. We then come on to part E. Now my seat is obviously a bucket seat with the side mounts, but for, for all purposes this is this is just the same. You've got the uh, the actual bars that sit underneath left and right. That's where the uh, seat belt mount is on that side. And this one is pu purely a spacer, so it's basically the same as the one that's been put on the other side. Then we've got the sliders um, with a couple of retaining uh, strengthening frames in it. And then we belt onto the side of the seat, the receiver for the buckle. On the driver's side, we have to take the wire and put it back into the one of the, the blanking plugs to make sure the seat belt switches on and off. There's only one on the driver's side, there's not one on the passenger side. And then once that's all together, the seat then drops down on top of the frame. And we've got these packing spaces. There's like a single hold one at the front and a double hold one at the back. 
and then yeah that should be it all nicely in together okay while the seat's out i'm just going to release the bottom of the um the seat belt here all of this is there's a little cap here that sits on top you pry that off and then you've got the uh the bolt that sits underneath release that because that needs to loop back through the side of the seat so that it's nice and close to your lap you don't want it going over the top of the seat like we said before one difference on the driver's side seat is it actually has a um a connector to the seat belt receiver electrical connection and that's just to give you a warning a seat belt warning so to release that cable well first off i've released the bolt here that just released the um the actual unit the cable then roots its way down through a couple of tabs here which just release this one i need to cut and it comes into the back of the actual block here to get into the back of the block there's a little cap on the side so you need to pull that up and that pings upwards and out and then the uh the actual connector can just come out of the side so literally once that is removed once this comes up up and out this white connector can slide out sideways in the hole that that leaves behind. Well, the seats are back in the car. So here we go, they've dropped in nice. Um, so on top of the frame, you then have the little packers, then you have the runners, then just in here, you have the spacer on this side, and on the other side, you have the, uh, the seatbelt receiver, and then you have on top, side mount, and then into the seats. To get them in, relatively straightforward, I would suggest you keep these quite loose on the seat from the uh, the side that faces out of the car. You can tighten them up later. Make sure they're tight on the physically tight on the other side because you can't get to them once the seat's in. But having a little bit of play here helps you align uh, everything on top of these these uh, frames with the packing spaces. The way the seat's shaped, it sort of tapers in a bit at the back, so there's more tension at the back that you've got to overcome and make sure you've got the seat positioned in nicely. But yeah, do tighten those up last. Otherwise than that, it's a real simple install. Seat belt comes back through the seat nicely, sits well across your lap. The uh, receiver sits in the side of the seat as well, very well, doesn't jab you in the side of the leg. And there's a nice natural line once the seat belt is open across your shoulder into there. So it's absolutely perfect with, um, with a three point belt. Looking at the weights, which was interesting, standard seat, 22.8 kilo. The Recaros came in at just under 14. So 8.9 kilo seat saving per side. And that gives me 7.8 kilos off the weight of the car again. So I'm over 50 kilo saving now, just on these sort of rudimentary changes, um, which is brilliant. But yeah, driving position seems really nice. I've got it set on the second to lowest point on the front and the lowest point on the back, as you can see there. And yeah, that's a real nice seating position. If you dropped lower at the front, I think you're gonna to be too upright, but this is just a nice compromise of being positioned well in the car um, for the wheel. Happy days. Right, well, it's all back in. It's all gone in nice. It's uh, it's cozy in here. They're actually really comfortable, more comfortable than perhaps I thought they were gonna be. They're probably a step more comfortable than expected, which is good. It, it, they're in here very snug. There's not like huge amounts of room between the, the wings of this and, and the door. They're quite close to the, the center console, but it fits. It's all in here nice. The, the rails are very good, really good quality. Um, the only struggle, main struggle I had was the way you're told to assemble them. So it's to put that frame in first, that gets bolted to the car. And then outside of the car, you fit your seat to your um, side mounts, to your um, plates that either is a blanking plate or the plate that holds the seat belt receiver. Then you have your sliders. And then beneath the sliders, there's actually a little spacer before you get onto that rail. And putting the rails onto the frame when they're already bolted in the car was, was a real fiddle, especially because of these little packing spaces that go under them. And I can't help but think it would have been much easier to have got everything together outside of the car and dropped it in as one. But I followed the way Recaro said you should do it, and yeah, it, it worked. It was just it was just quite fiddly. Um, really happy. The seat belts run through the, um, the, the the bottom slots fine. So I've got the seat belt receiver. It doesn't jam you in the side or anything like that. It's it's it's, it's just nicely there, and um, there's no fouling of the seat belt here. I mean, the seat belt comes over nice from here. The only thing that could be improved perhaps is the, the seatbelt receiver's got a wire on it. Um, 
by wire I mean like that like a strap which, which which attaches it to the seat if it had been a little bit taller that would be advantageous so we'll just bring it up slightly higher but as it stands it's absolutely fine my um, the seat belt warning light still works because all the cabling's reconnected under the seat with that Recaro connector that they supplied so yeah jobs are good and I'm quite looking forward to um, having a good decent drive in it to be honest it feels much I'm so much more cosseted in this seat I can still when you put a Momo steering wheel in these cars you cut off the top of the, the rev range um, uh, and the speedo you, you, you kind of miss that top part of it because the, the, the wheel cuts it off and I'm still missing a little bit but it's better than it was because I'm sitting a bit lower now um, which I'm surprised but I, th I thought I would have a, a clear view of all of the gauges now but you still yeah, you still have a little bit of obscured top of the um, revometer but anyway it's good. I like it. Feels a bit more race car. I'm going to go for a spin. Whoop, whoop. <laughs>